training your Pokemon with effort values, or EVs, is super easy in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. Let's teach you everything you need to know about EV training and how to make your Pokemon the strongest they can be. Welcome back everyone, it's Abdali here with another exciting Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet tips and tricks tutorial video. Today is all about EV training. By the end of this video, you guys will become experts in everything effort values. We're going to show you exactly what effort values are. We're going to show you the fastest way of EV training your Pokemon. We'll show you exactly what items you can use in order to boost your training. And we'll show you the exact spots that you guys can train all of your Pokemon. So. It's going to be a great, informative, very awesome video for you, but it's going to be the first of two because we've got a lot to cover and it's going to spill into another video, so stay tuned for that one. If the video helped you out, be sure to smash that like button, turn on notifications so you don't miss the next upload. Anyway, let's jump on into it. All right, let's teach you guys about effort values or EVs in a very fun little diagram. And I've got some Pokemon cards that we're going to show you. Okay, so right over here is going to be a wild caught Pokemon out of nowhere. It's at level 50, for example. And then right over here, we have our Pikachu with a little fun crown. You can see that over here that we've raised from the very beginning all throughout our adventures and battled thousands of Pokemon along the way. Now, naturally, if they're both at level 50 over here, this Pikachu is going to be stronger simply because it has a bunch of effort values gained from KOing Pokemon versus this guy who is completely wild caught and has zero effort values. So for the rest of our example, we're going to show you guys exactly what happened with this Pikachu. So rewind it back to the very beginning of the game and let's say he's our very first starter from Professor Oak or whoever in order to get this Pokemon going. So he has zero effort values. He's completely given to us and he's there. So let's actually use this right over this way. This is our Snorlax mug. It, to signify the entire container of how many effort values our Pikachu can actually hold on to. So right now it's empty. You can see over here, our Pikachu is just grabbed. He's We just got him in our adventure. So that means that he's got no effort values, no experience trained whatsoever. Now, with this entire container, every Pokemon can store up to 510 effort value points. And within there, every single one of those stats in the game, HP, attack, special attack, defense, special defense, and speed, can only go up to 252 per stat. So you think about it this way, right? Snorlax, as we're going up and filling all the effort values up over here, it can only hold 510, but 252 max in each stat. So it's up to you on how you want to build your specific Pokemon, right? Do you want to max out two of your stats and then a little bit extra into another stat? That's really up to you. And that's exactly what we're doing with our Pikachu here. So that's a great example. So let's take a look at exactly how this works out. So we have our Pikachu, which is right over here, and his effort values, right? Right off the bat. Okay, so here's a Magikarp that comes out of nowhere. Pikachu attacks the Magikarp. Boom. By doing that, you're going to gain one effort value point. Bing. And that's it. There we go. One out of 510. So here's another Magikarp that comes on by. Boom. Knocked him out with this Pikachu. Now we're going to get another effort value. Done. Easy peasy. Oh my gosh, a wild Larvitar. Super great. Let's knock it out with Pikachu. Boom. Just by doing that, we're going to gain one attack effort value point. Boom, right over there. Larvitar, another wild one. Knock it out. We're going to get another attack effort value. Boom. As you can see, this is exactly how this works out. You can have up to 510 of these effort values. So now it's up to you on how exactly you want to spend them so that your Pokemon gets super strong. So now you guys have a visual example of what effort values are. We're going to take a look at what it looks like within the game. As you can see over here, I've got a Dragonite that is a shiny version, and I've got a regular Dragonite as well that I used throughout the main story. With my shiny Dragonite, I wanted to EV train it in specifically what I wanted versus absolutely everything. So remember our Snorlax mug right over this way. I wanted to make sure that it had max attack and that it had max speed over here as well. So in order to do that, I just battled all the Pokemon that gave those stats. And if you take a look over here at the summary, you can see exactly that I did that. Uh, max attack sparkling over here, meaning I put 252 of these effort values right inside here. And then with speed, we did the exact same thing over there as well. 252 in speed. And then with the remainder of the six effort values, I threw that into HP. Super simple, that's all 510 allocated where exactly I want it in order to give it whatever max attack possible and max speed. 
Okay, let's start off this tutorial by teaching you the fastest way of EV training your Pokemon, but it's gonna cost you a little bit of money. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. So head on over right over here into any of the Chansey Supply. I'm over in Mesa Goza, the east side. And as soon as you jump inside here, you'll be able to see all the different Pokemon vitamins in the game. So click on I'd like to buy and you'll be able to see HP up, protein, iron, calcium, zinc, and carbose. Those are going to be vitamins that give 10 effort values per specific stat. So for example, right over here, HP up uh, or protein, for example, if I want to EV train my Pokemon in attack stat, we're going to grab a protein and each of these is worth 10. So we're going to be able to buy 25 of these to put into our effort value bucket right over here. And if I wanted to max out attack and speed, I would grab the Carbos right over this way and then buy 25 of them and then just feed them to my Pokemon. And then I'm pretty much done because we have it over there. So that's a fast way of collecting all of your effort values needed. So buy some vitamins and sometimes you can come across them on the ground. So now you know exactly how to get all of the effort value vitamins within the game. We're gonna show you guys exactly how to manually raise your Pokemon. So this one's gonna be super easy with the help of power items. And we're gonna use these Pokemon cards again. Let's pretend that this is a power item over here. So normally when you have your Pikachu against any other Pokemon that you knock out, boom, you knock out a Magikarp, you singular get one speed effort value point to go inside right over here. Now, let's say for example, we equip Pikachu with a power item. Not only are we going to knock out a Magikarp for one of these EVs, but the power item is going to give an additional eight. So we have a boatload more of these every single time for a total of nine every Magikarp that we knock out. Power items are super good. So let's show you guys exactly where to find those. So let's take a look at exactly where the power items are located and they're located super early within the game. As you can see, you start your game right over here to the south. As you make your way up to Mesa Goza, it's going to be directly here in a place called Delhi Bird Presence. Head inside here and you'll be able to find them in the general goods tab right over this way. Super easy. Now, if you scroll all the way down to the very bottom, you can see them over here. Like I said earlier, the power weights add an additional eight effort value points per KO for a total of nine. So right over your power weight helps out with the HP stat, Bracer helps out with the attack stat, Power Belt helps out with defense, Power Lens helps out with special attack, we've got the Power Band that helps out with special defense, and the Power Anklet available to help out with the speed stat. I wanna show you guys all of the specific locations for every single EV training spot for all six of the stats. Let's take a look. If you're looking to train HP, equip your power weight on your Pokemon so that it'll gain an additional eight EVs in HP for every battle. Head back to the beginning of the game by the Poco Path Lighthouse and look for Lechonk or Azuril found in the areas nearby. If you want to boost their encounter rates, feel free to make sandwich number 80, the ham sandwich for the normal encounter level one. Proceed to battle as many of these as you want in order to gain HP EVs. Now, if you're looking to train attack, equip your Power Bracer on your Pokemon so that it'll gain an additional eight EVs in attack for every battle. Head back to the beginning of the game by the Poco Path Lighthouse and look for Young Goose found in the Inlet Grotto. All you have to do there is battle as many of them as you want. If you want to boost their encounter rates, go ahead and make sandwich number 80, the Ham Sandwich, for the normal encounter level one. Now, if you're looking to train defense, all you have to do is equip the power belt on your Pokemon so that it'll gain an additional eight effort values in defense every battle. Head back to the beginning of the game by the Poco Path Lighthouse and look for Tarantula or Scatterbug found in the nearby areas. If you want to boost their encounter rates, feel free to make sandwich number 84, the cheese sandwich for the bug encounter level one and proceed to battle as many of these as you want in order to gain all those defense EVs. Now, if you're looking to train for special attack, equip the power lens on your Pokemon so that it'll gain an additional eight EVs in special attack for every battle. Head back to the beginning of the game by the Poco Path Lighthouse and look for Houndour found in the Inlet Grotto. If you want to boost their encounter rates, feel free to make sandwich number 20, the Pickle Sandwich for Fire Encounter Level 1 and proceed to battle as many of these Houndours as you want in order to get as much special attack as possible. 
Now for special defense, equip your Power Bracer on your Pokemon so it'll gain an additional 8 effort values in special defense for every battle. Head back to the beginning of the game by the Pokopath Lighthouse and look for Hopip found in the areas nearby. If you want to boost their encounter rates, feel free to make Sandwich number 104 Cloth Claw Sandwich for Grass Encounter level 1. And knock out as many as you can for these special defense EVs. Lastly, if you're looking to train for speed, equip your Power Anklet on your Pokemon so that it'll gain an additional 8 EVs in speed for every battle. Head back to the beginning of the game by the Pokopath Lighthouse and look for Diglett found in the Inlet Grotto. If you want to boost their encounter rates, feel free to make Sandwich Number 1, Jembumbur, for the Ground Encounter Level 1, and proceed to battle as many of these as you want in order to gain those speed effort value points. Okay, now that you've gone through and EV trained your Pokemon, all 510 effort value points, head on over here. We're over in Lavincia right over here, home of Iono, of course. Now, what we'll have to do is head straight over to behind the gym, and there's an NPC right over this way that we can use in order to get our Pokemon an effort ribbon. And this is going to be a way of concrete knowing whether or not you got all 510. So talk to this lady right over here, but putting in the necessary effort. Um, you'll notice this, you can click on the A button right over here and she'll ask you which Pokemon you want to jump in and see which effort values are there. So for example, right over here, I've got my shiny fully EV trained Dragonite. We can see over here, um, this NPC will say, the Pokemon's clearly earned that effort ribbon. It looks great. So that means that what we can do is go over to our summary. You can take a look at the summary over this way. Go over to the last page, and then you can click on change mark or ribbon. By doing so, you'll be able to gain the effort ribbon. So whenever you throw this Pokemon into battle, it'll say Dragonite the once well trained. And it's just a great way of taking a look at all of your different Pokemon and their ribbons in the top corner of the boxes. So for example, example, I usually put that mark on any of these Pokemon that are fully EV trained in a competitive setting. So you can see I've got one, two, three of them that are completely EV trained and ready to go. So one thing I want to cover before ending off this tutorial is what do you do if you messed up or if you got some EVs in the wrong spot? Well, don't worry, not all hope is lost, simply thanks to the different berries in the game. All right, so taking a look at your bag over this way, if you scroll over to your berries, odds are you have a bunch of these guys available for you. Uh, take a look right over here. Um, you have the Pomeg Berry, which is going to help you reduce your HP stat. You've got the Kelpsy Berry, which helps you reduce the attack stat. Qualot Berry for minus defense, Hondu Berry for minus special attack, we have the Greppa Berry for minus special defense, and the Tomato Berry right over here, which helps you reduce your speed stat. So think of these as vitamins, but they're going to take away 10 effort value points per stat. So case in point, let's say for example, a lot of you guys have been using your uh, Coridon or your Maridon since you got it, which is great, congratulations, it's helping you beat the game. But now when you take a look at its EVs, you know, sometimes you may have gotten some weird EVs and some different stats. Like for me, I got a lot more in defense and I don't necessarily need it in defense because I would much want it in more uh, probably attack and maybe like maxing out in speed. Or if I want to use it for raids, I want to do uh, all attack and all HP. So right over here, I want to get rid of the defensive stuff. So what I'm going to need to do is go over to bag. We're going to need to go over to our berries right over this way. And I'm going to find the one that I want to get rid of. Uh, so right over here, Qualot Berry. So case in point, I'm going to use this right over here. Uh, you can use it on Coridon. It'll say how many you want to use. Now be very wary over here. The berries actually boost friendship um, and give away base stats, but you can absolutely waste a lot of them. So just do one at a time and then see exactly what it shows. Uh, so case in point right over here, I'm going to use one to get rid of it. It lost some base points for defense. I'm going to use another one right over here just to show you that I got rid of 20 effort value points. There we go. Cool. We're going to go over here. I'm going to use it again. I'm going to get rid of 30 effort value points. There we go. Great. So we got rid of 30. We can go over here, use it again. And there we go. So we're doing it one at a time. And by doing it uh, one at a time, we're not going to waste any. So there we go. 
its base stat can't go any lower. That's exactly what we wanted to show you over there. So now his defensive base stat uh, for effort values is at a zero, which is perfect. It's completely erased. Now that means I can take all of those 40, 50, or however many, and I can allocate them to a different stat. So that's why I say don't use all 15 of them right off the bat, because these berries are relatively hard to find. So I'm just going to show you guys right now exactly what that looks like on my uh, Coridon right over here. We saw earlier that um, there was a little bit of defense on that chart. Now there's absolutely zero defense and we could pump him full of HP if we wanted to. Now if you guys are looking for all of these different EV reducing berries, a uh, case uh, in point, you'll be finding them right over here in this general area. Uh, yeah, this is exactly where I found it over here. It's right by Lavincia. In this general area, you'll be able to find all of these different berries. And they're going to look exactly like this on the ground. So go through, you can press the A button, and I've got myself a Hondu berry. So keep on looking around. You may find some additional ones just all over the place. It's a lot easier to find them at nighttime. There's a palm egg berry. It's a lot easier to find them at nighttime, and definitely watch out for wild Pokemon that come on through. Well, there you have it. Now you guys are experts in everything effort value training. What did you think? Did I give you a great idea with the awesome 510 vessel right over here? Anyway, uh, I'm going to go fill this thing up with coffee because I've got tons more tutorials to work on, uh, considering the fact that we're not done making your Pokemon even stronger. We still have hyper training, we still have individual values, and we have natures to cover. So that's going to be in our next video. So look forward to that. And make sure that you guys are all subscribed and turn on notifications so you know when that video goes live. Anyway, that's it for me. I'm going to go back to work and I'm going to give you guys the rest of this stuff very, very soon. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.